there's still debate. And I think uh, the whole anti-aging field, even though there are all these markers and symptoms of aging, they still haven't been able to label aging as a disease. And what's, what's funny is that aging is like a comorbidity. So it's okay, you have diabetes. But part of it is also because of the process of aging, you know, or you have art, osteoarthritis. And part of it is you, you comorbidly are aging because the fact that you're aging, which reduces, uh, first of all, you have higher inflammation in your body and you, you know, of course you um, have uh, less stem cells to, to replace the damaged tissue. Um, and, and, and so th there are actually a lot, of, you know, mitochondria go downhill, you know, straight, straight line. So all these things are symptoms of aging. Joy Kong, welcome to the Keto Camp Podcast. Thank you so much, Ben. Happy to be here. I'm excited to chat with you. You're doing some amazing work as a triple board certified physician, which is highly, highly impressive. We'll get into some of the cool things you're doing at your clinic and all over the world. Before we start, before we get there, let's start with your backstory. Growing up in Beijing, China for 20 years, what was that like? Uh, it was lovely because I grew up on the university campus. So in a way, I, I think I was more sheltered than most of the Chinese, I would say. So, um, you know, there are these compounds, I think in, in a, in, you know, Soviet style or, you know, ch in China, they will have people live where they work. So my dad was a professor and my mom, you know, teaches in the high school. That's part of the university. So I, you know, I would just, you know, it's like a, its own little kingdom. So I grew up on the campus, you know, lots of professors, all around, lots of college students. So it's a very much an environment of learning, of, um, you know, just pursuit of knowledge and, you know, exercise, wellness, you know, you, you need to be all around, all around it, you know, be interested in the world, you know, understand world affairs. And um, so that was, it was actually very kind of um, uplifted type of environment. So I was, uh, I was happy, you know, while being rebellious. <laughs> <laughs> Rebellious. What does that mean? What, what were some things that you were rebelling on? Um, you know, some people are just born having trouble with rules. And um, for me, uh, being in China, which is very much a conformist, conformist society, that you're supposed to be a certain way and rules are rules. And the way I look at rules is that if it does not make sense, that is not a valid rule. So, so I always analyze whatever rules that are imposed on me. So if, if they don't make good sense to me, then it doesn't apply. <laughs> so, so I've been in trouble since kindergarten, you know, I was kicked out of a dance, you know, kind of group, you know, three times <laughs> and, um, and just always was always in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> so I was, I just had a conversation with my dad yesterday, you know, I thanked him for, for being there for me, uh, <clears throat> you know, you know, I, I gave him a lot of trouble, but he was always patient and he gave me love. And, uh, and he said, yes, you were very difficult, but I survived. <laughs> and, uh, I said, Dad, you, you realize that is really worth it. Right. And he gave me like big thumbs up. So <laughs> that's great. Oh, that's awesome. Is your dad still in China right now? Yeah. So he's still living on the university campus. So that's still my hometown. Yeah. It's, it's Tsinghua University is, you know, it's a science and technology university. So very much, you know, science was always kind of like a, one of my, you know, main pillars, you know, for, for, for me and um, my understanding of the world. So growing up in a very, very scientific, um, you know, kind of uh, atmosphere, um, which was why, you know, later on, it took some transformation for me to really, I had to go search, you know, when it comes to spirituality. So that that's a whole other subject. But yeah, so your environment uh, gave you certain strength, but also put you in certain restraint. Mm, yeah, well said. So what, what about the Chinese healthcare system, what, what's the difference between what they do in China with healthcare versus what they, what you've seen here in America? Uh, yeah. So Chinese, obviously it's, you know, the biggest population in the world and, um, you know, they didn't have Western medicine, right? So, um, so, so was India, you know, the, the Eastern medicine system, 
um, had worked pretty well. Of course, it's not um, has its own uh, limitations when it comes to acute diseases. You know, big infections or or injuries. It has its own limitations. But as far as keep keeping people healthy and keeping them um, balanced in a balanced state. I think both cultures have done a great job. And so in China, that's always part of the tradition and, and Chinese medicine doctors have always been very revered. And then it, there comes you know, Western medicine, uh, which are very much respected as well. So there are two medical systems. There are people who go, go into Chinese medicine uh, or go into Western medicine, but people who go into Chinese medicine also have to learn the whole Western medicine system. Um, in the big hospital, they will have, you know, all the, the usual departments of, um, of Western medicine, you know, ophthalmology, you know, uh, ENT, you know, surgery. So they have these different departments, but they will also have a department called Chinese medicine. So this is all in the big hospital. Um, and then you have the pharmacy and the pharmacy will have Chinese medicine, Western medicine, depending on what doctors are giving you. Um, so at my home, is very much a egalitarian uh, system when it comes to medicine. So medications are all thrown in, you know, one big drawer. Um, there, you know, are there antibiotics? There, are, you know, anti-inflammatories, and there are all these Chinese herbal, you know, concoctions. So everything is all intermingled together, and um, and it's always kind of fun, you know, when I get a little discomfort and, you know, some problems, I will tell my mom my symptoms and my mom will, you know, make her diagnosis and then go into the drawer and grab whatever that's, that she thinks is appropriate. So sometimes it's Western medicine, sometimes it's Chinese medicine. So it was never, it, it was always respect for both because, you know, not one thing or for everything. So you've got to respect the strength of both. Um, so th that was just kind of the, the atmosphere that, that I grew up in. And um, so when I first came to this culture, uh, it came to a, the US that was in early 90s. Um, I remember um, just talking about even something like acupuncture, people weren't accepting, like they, they think I'm, you know, like, you can tell in people's faces <laughs> that they think you're a little out there. Um, so I learned to just, you know, just leave it alone. And what's interesting is that there's more and more acceptance. I think, you know, like any of the new medicine that comes along, you call it new, but, you know, it's newly accepted. Um, it's really driven by results. So it's not going to be able to take hold if it cannot produce results. It's only because people are getting great benefits. More and more are getting benefits because there's limitation in Western medical approach. It's not solving the problem. So when one person gets great results, tell their friends, and things just spread like that. Um, so it's um, it's fascinating for me to witness that. Um, even when I was in medical school, that was what 1999. I remember having a conversation with this um, MD PhD student, um, you know, very smart guy, and then I just mentioned acupuncture, and he said, you know, there has been still no evidence that acupuncture actually works. I said, really? Have you looked <laughs> at how much published results are out there? And granted, a lot of these pub publications were in Chinese, but there are reams and reams of them. So just because it's not in your language doesn't mean that it's non-existent. So th there were some rigorous studies because the Chinese wanted to know how does this work and does it really work? Why does it work? Um, so, so even from then, this is 20 years ago, uh, there's huge transformation of people's acceptance of something like acupuncture. Now acupuncture is okay. It's not yeah. crazy anymore. So, so it's interesting. And I see that same, you know, same thing is true for a lot of these now what's called alternative therapies, um, including lots of herbal therapies, you know, some, some new treatments, you know, hyperbaric, uh, ozone therapy, and, um, you know, and, and stem cell therapy. So all these things, I think, again, are driven by results. You're getting Absolutely. results. Yeah, you're getting results. So people want it. That's why I call it a grassroots movement, because people, their needs are driving the forward motion of the, the acceptance of these treatments. Which is so important, especially because we know this medical system, this healthcare, which is really sick here, here in America, it just doesn't work. And, and one of the quotes, you kind of just said it, but I had it in my notes. 
when they say there's no evidence, they're not looking at the evidence, which is exactly what happened with your college mate back in the day. Now, speaking of rules that don't make sense that you want to break, the conventional medical system is kind of similar to those rules that we need to break. You have a great analogy on what's happening in the body with a symptom and a fire in a house and how conventional medicine oh, yeah. Could you share that? Yes. So I think, you know, people, there's still debate. And I think uh, the whole anti-aging field, even though there are all these markers and symptoms of aging, they still haven't been able to label aging as a disease. And what's, what's funny is that aging is like a comorbidity. So it's okay. You have diabetes, but part of it is also because of the process of aging, you know, or you have art, osteoarthritis. And part of it is you, you comorbidly are aging because the fact that you're aging, which reduces, uh, first of all, you have higher inflammation in your body, have a, a less of a balance and, and vigorous, uh, you know, vigor in your, in your immune system. And you, you know, of course, you um, have uh, less stem cells to to replace the damaged tissue, um, and, and and so th there are actually a lot. You know, your mitochondria go downhill. You know, straight straight line. So all these things are symptoms of aging. Um, so when we talk about aging, people somehow, you know, throughout the centuries have accepted. Okay, aging is part of uh, just part of human living, and you know, but. It's that yes, we we all we're all gonna you know we're all heading for damage and death. That, that's true, but how you age, there's a big difference. Some people will have a heart attack and die. Some people will live to their you know late 90s, happily go around you know riding bicycle, you know walking to grocery stores, and then they fall asleep and then they they drift away. So there are drastically different ways of living and dying. Um, so how, which way do you, do you want your life to be? Um, so my analogy is that aging is, is kind of like, if you look at the body as a house, so from the outside, you look at the house, um, you know, you, 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 maybe things are okay, but if the house is catching on fire, it, you know, let's say a disease is is brewing, which could be part of the changes of aging. Uh, people don't see anything going on on the outside, but when the fire started, you don't just start you know, with big fire, right? You start somewhere. You start smoldering. You start, you know, you, you know this brewing fire. You know things going on before you can see anything on the outside. So when the smoke start to come out of the window, that's when we actually are seeing some kind of symptoms. But before the symptoms is merging, things are happening to prepare you for the symptoms. And that's what we need to pay attention to. How can we prevent the house from catching on fire in the first place? And that's what I think is the beauty of the anti-aging or the whole integrated medicine is to optimize the system so you're never going to catch on fire, that you're, you're always keeping things at a, at, at a balanced state. Um, so once the fire is on, um, then the, there's gonna be a lot of damage. Yeah, you can put out the fire, but guess what? You know, there's damage. There's, your cup yeah. is burned, your, <laughs> your you know, uh, structure probably some, you know, if it's really bad, the, the house can get, can burn down, so. It's a great analogy and it makes so much sense. You know, there's, there's symptoms, but the symptoms are not necessarily the problem they're a result of the problem. So we want to get to the cause of those symptoms. So where allopathic medicine fails most of the time is only fo focusing on the after effect, the symptom, but what caused it? It could be so far removed. It could be so upstream, so downstream. So what you do and what functional medicine practitioners do is looking at the causes of those symptoms. And then you take care of the cause and then, oh, it's like magic. The symptoms go away. How cool is that? I kind of look at it as the original intelligence of who we are. Uh, that's the essence of us. So within each stem cell contains this full package of the intelligence that actually made us being a human possible. So because we all came from a single stem cell. So just look at us. We, we are all from a single stem cell. So from that single stem cell, it was able to divide and multi multiply 
and you know and and transform and 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 uh, you know migrate and forming this incredible geometry and then this you know this and complex um, you know tissue and organ systems and then a full human being um, so that is pure magic I think you know we still don't understand how that happens right we as humans we don't know we don't know how to create a cell. We, we, you know that that life is so powerful so mysterious we don't know how to make we can bring it from a life you know from a life itself we can get a cell from a live animal but we don't know how to create it so there's incredible power and intelligence that we don't know how to explain yet no one you know you can be an you know uh, embryologist you, you know you can know how the embryo is formed but you don't know why and how mm. And it's so complex, it's, it's mind boggling. So stem cell, the single stem cell have so much potential, but with each stem cell will, you know, that original stem cell will divide into many, many stem, stem cells. And as they keep dividing, they lose certain potentials. So the, but then there's still stem cells. The, the stem cells we use these days are much further down the line, right? We're not using embryonic stem cells. Those are extremely powerful, contains, you know, wild potentials. That's why they could cause teratoma. But when it's further down the line, it still contains a lot of in information, but it's not going to fully express everything there is. So it has limited expression. Um, so it's, it becomes very complex. Uh, when people say stem cells, you know, I think there's this very, um, it's, it's a little bit of a, you know, maybe naive view of what stem cells are as if, you know, stem cell is a stem cell, but stem cells is not a stem cell. There's so many kinds and so many functions. So that's, you know, one thing that I, I think people should know that they're, you know, just because you're getting stem cell treatment, you know, depending on where it came from, you know, or how it's made, it's drastically different. Yeah. So, so you gotta be careful what, what, you know, what you're getting. Yeah. So talk more about that. I, I know that you said in the past that you get stem cells treatment on yourself about every three months. Why do you do that? And what are the sources of the stem cells that you use on yourself? Um, so when I heard, first found out about stem cell therapy, and that was five years ago, um, and reading about what they could do, and then also just seeing what it done to other people um, that I know, and also, you know, for my patients. Uh, I just thought this is this is too great. You know, I I I am you know off adventure of spirit. So so I thought you know I really wouldn't mind having this experiment on myself because I see the signs, I see what they can do. I I think I want to do this you know anti aging uh, treatment and and of course you know initially people were doing stem cell therapy more looking at therapeutic potentials. They they were looking at you know treating particular conditions. And then later on, more uh, data came out, you know, more studies came out actually looking at potential capabilities of these cells to prolong life and extend health span, right? Making people living much more, you know, vibrantly, or, you know, they were doing studies on, on animals, you know, on, on rats and mice, and realizing that this simple stem cell infusion can actually extend their lifespan by about 30%. And not only that, it preserves their, their physical capabilities, their mental capacities. And it just, you know, there's, you know, a lot of evidence. And so, so I'm kind of glad I did that. Um, while I was doing it, you know, a little bit kind of at the time, you know, five years ago, a little bit of a, you know, kind of science experiment on myself because I know how safe it is. So, so you know, it's a, it's a calculated risk, right? It's, okay. it's, it's, you know, it's an educated risk. So, um, you know, I didn't really... I thought, okay, you know, maybe I'll just try to stop the aging process or see if this just keep me, you know, at my current state. So that was, I was 45. Um, and I didn't, you know, I didn't, you know, be an Asian. I guess people say, oh, you don't, you know, you age well. But now when I look at back at my pictures, I definitely saw uh, a lot of aging going on, you know, overworked and, uh, you know, I wasn't taking the kind of, um, you know, holistic approach to my health, you know, I didn't have all the tools. So, so I was, you know, well on my way, you know, with the aging process. And then after I started doing stem cells, you know, initially was my neighbor who's making comments saying, Hey, you know, what's going on? You're looking younger and younger. So this is about a year after I started doing stem cells. And I didn't really know 
that I made any big difference. I, I thought, you know, I'm just, you know, I'm doing well, you know, I'm, I'm healthy and I'm, I'm, I'm good. But um, it was other people who started to making comment to make comments saying that I'm looking younger and younger. So um, and then I started looking at pictures and then I wasn't choosing, you know, to look at my own pictures, which is Facebook, you know, who keeps sending me happy anniversary photos. <laughs> and that's when I when I thought, um, oh boy, I can't believe I posted that picture. I look horrible. <laughs> so that's when I when I thought, oh my goodness, have I changed? Have I gone backward in age? Um, so that was, you know, I that wasn't my goal. I just wanted to not age. I wasn't thinking about getting younger. So that, that was kind of a fun, fun thing. So now I definitely have a lot of patients who are doing that um, and they all love it. They can't wait for their next treatment. So I had people, you know, do it, you know, either every six months or, you know, some more aggressive ones would do it every two months. Um, so they just, they know what they do. It does for their body and for their mind. And, and, you know, they feel fantastic and people make comments that they're look, looking great. So, so that's the whole, you know, if you can prevent the aging process, then you prevent the whole cascade to disease. So, so that's what, you know, you, you can avoid a lot of, a lot of suffering. Yeah, that's super cool. So your photos started to look younger, recent photos versus older photos. Your neighbors were making comments about you. And it's obviously that visually you're, you're anti-aging, you're looking younger. Now, are you also testing the cellular age and other methods like telomeres, DNA methylation? Like what are some ways that you kind of look at the age of the cells? Um, you know, I need to, yeah, I really need to, I, I'm actually looking at, I'm still, I, I'm still not convinced which one is the best method. I've been talking with, you know, different doctors and scientists, you know, about this. Um, so I've yet to settle down on one that I, I can trust because I do want to bring that in clinic to quantify but I'm just not convinced. There are a lot of methods. There's, you know, the telomeres or DNA methylation methods. There's VO2 max and there's the, you know, hyper, you know, the, the CRP, there's just various yeah. tools, but I'm not convinced which one is works well. So I just, um, you know, right now I'm just going with what, you know, what I look like. So it sounds funny, but you know, I tell people what you look like, what's on the outside your face is a ref reflection of what's inside that's why you know chinese medicine you know they, they they look at your tongue they look at you know your complexion they they die they do a lot of diagnosis from just you know your face your eyes you know what's going on external you know that what you can see um the thing is when people age you know i i, I tell them that you may look in the mirror and saw some wrinkles and you're like oh geez you know i've aged but what you don't think about is all the wrinkling that's going on in your liver in your heart in your lungs in your bones they're all going on all you can see is the face but you've got to take care of everything you know the face is a reflection that's such so a great I'm Great point. I was, no, you're so right. You know, I love that point. Uh, the face is a reflection. And I agree with you. There's not really something that I've settled on in terms of testing cellular age as well. It's, um, there's too many variables that I've seen as well. Um, when you talk about stem cells, you do treatment at your clinic. Could you explain a little bit more the name of your clinic, where it's located? And then also, what is this treatment like for those who have no idea what stem cell treatment is? Um, so I'm in the greater Los Angeles area. So I'm um, in the San Fernando Valley. Um, so the way I do the treatment is, you know, first of the, or first of all, a very comprehensive evaluation that they have to fill out this form, um, you know, asking everything about their history. And then I actually work with our naturopathic doctor who will go over their entire history. And then when they come to the clinic, we'll do the labs, comprehensive laboratory testing and then will address you know whatever deficiencies that's going on either nutritional deficiencies or um, um, you know hypersensitivity to you know to various food or, or chemicals um, and their microbiome health and their hormonal balance just so there, there's a whole complexity of why a person is not optimal and so in the meantime you know we have pre stem cell treatment 
um, recommendations where there are, you know, lifestyle changes I want them to make and, and supplements I want them to take to optimize results. And then they will come to the clinic and, and do the treatment. And a lot of times we combine other treatment modalities to even further enhance the benefits, you know, such as stem cell therapy or NAD therapy. Um, so it's a very comprehensive wraparound you know, treatment and depending on what kind of um, issues they want help with. So if they want um, just, if they have autoimmune conditions, they have COPD, you know, a lot of these are systemic conditions. Um, it, it's, you know, I, I, I use the intravenous route, but um, if they have some local issues like joint problems or, you know, just you know, surface, hair restoration, you know, facial rejuvenation. So some kind of a local tissue, you know, that's more on the exterior, then I can do um, direct local injections. So we do, so I mentioned hair and face and also sexual wellness. So injection to vagina or, or penis. And then we do all kinds of um, injections uh, in, in the musculoskeletal system, you know, including joints and back. Um, so, you know, I, I always tell people that when you have osteoarthritis, you uh, this is not really a wear and tear disease. It's, it's a disease of your body not being able to keep up with repair. So if you have damage and, you know, a sports injury and, and your body fixes itself, then you're done. But if you have chronic, unrelenting, this ache and pain and stiffness and just it, that's your body constantly inflamed and this is a systemic issue is your whole body not able to mobilize repair and in those cases i help enhance the body by doing intravenous therapy and then for larger joints like the knee the hip and shoulder etc i will do local injections because you need the cells to be delivered locally uh, because they're within the large joints that there's very little blood um, exchange. So, so we, you know, depending on what they need, we, um, you know, we'll, we'll devise a, a, a appropriate program for them. What's your website for those who are listening, who want to check you out? Maybe they're in Los Angeles or they want to travel there. What's your uh, website? Yeah. So our clinic is called Thea Center for Regenerative Medicine. That's T-H-E-A. So it's just a T-H-E-A-C-R-M.com. Um, but we are in the process of uh, changing our website. Um, we're, we're kind of uh, expanding our clinic into, you know, what we, um, you know, uh, the, the is, is subsuming this regenerative portion into Uplift Longevity Center. So that's coming up, Uplift with a Y. Um, oh, cool. Yeah, so, so that's, that's coming up. Awesome. We'll put your website in, in the podcast notes so everybody could go check it out. Is it fair to say that you could, meet somebody and, and look at them and say, and, and know that, that that person needs some stem cells just by looking at the person. <laughs> some than others, definitely. Yeah. Okay. But honestly, I would say if you're over age, at least 35, you know, if not 30, because we, we know, if, you know, 25, you know, we, we're starting to go downhill, but let's just say 35. That's when most people notice changes, you know, of, of their physiologically, they're not as, you know, kind of in tip top shape as they were in their twenties. Um, at least, you know, above 35, I would say everybody above 35 should, you know, can benefit from stem cells. Um, you know, that's, that's no question. And even when they're older, when they think, oh my God, maybe it's too late. You know, I'm in my late seventies, you know, is this going to benefit? Yes. The research supports it. Even, you know, they've done this research. It is really fun. I, I love this research someone have done. Um, they give these uh, rats that's at the human equivalent age of 75. So rats age, I think was like, 20, 20 months or something. So, so in human equivalent age, it's, it's, it's 75 years old. So these are old rats. They look old, you know, they move old and, uh, and they start giving them stem cells. And what's interesting is that, um, so there's a group that did not get stem cells and the group that got stem cells. So imagine these, you know, kind of human 75 year old, you know, rats, um, the, the, the rats that got stem cells lived uh, from the time they got cells to the time they died was three times as long as the rats that did not get stem cells. Wow. So basically you extended, you tripled the time you have, you remain on earth. And not only they live much longer, they're moving better. You know, their, their, their fur, it's got shinier. And then their, you know, their mental capacities they are running around the maze. They're 
able to figure things out. They basically extended their time of being vibrant. And then, you know, and then they die. So, yeah. you know, we're all going to die. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we can't escape that. <laughs> At least not yet. <laughs> um, the, the key is quality, right? How can we yes. enhance quality? Have a great time while you're here. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. And that's that study is interesting because that was three times the extension of their lifespan with older ra uh, rats. Uh, my, was it rats or mice? I forget. I think it's rats. Yeah. Rats. Yeah. So, I mean, they were older. So imagine being younger and being proactive with this, like we're, we're speaking about here now well, you down for younger rats. So like, like a uh, middle aged and, uh, and that they definitely showed, you know, 30% extension of lifespan. Yeah. Amazing. So what are some natural, besides getting the, the actual treatment, which is a great idea if you're over the age of 30, what are some maybe other ways we can do it on a day-to-day -day basis? What role does fasting or extended fasting play with stem cell production, getting rid of senescent cells? Have you looked at any of that? Uh, yeah, I think fasting definitely is a powerful tool. So I do intermittent fasting. I mean, I'm still fasting, you know, actually before the, the our, our, our cause, nice. like I'm really hungry, <laughs> but you know what, I'm going I'm to handle it. Um, so I do intermittent fasting. I don't eat before noon every day. Um, so, you know, at least 16 hours of fast, um, I think is, is a very powerful way of, of, you know, getting your body to, you know, to be more resilient. And, um, um, and, and of course what you eat, that, that's the absolute foundation, you know, let food be thy medicine, right? I think it's absolutely true. I mean, there's such power in what you put in your body. So, you know, everybody needs to really, really respect this incredible kind of vessel that we, we are, uh, gifted to, um, and, um, and, and put the right things in the body. So that, that itself is probably one of the most powerful things. Like when people are looking at uh, losing weight, um, what's the, they think it's 70% um, diet, maybe 30% of, you know, exercise. So people used to think exercise, exercise, but now we know the role of exercise is much smaller than the role of diet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so true. So eat clean, eat whole foods, practice intermittent fasting. Let's say you were in an elevator and you had, 45 seconds to explain to somebody in that elevator, a stranger, what exactly the process of aging is so they could really understand it. What would be that 45 second elevator pitch? <laughs> um, the process of aging is that, um, you know, there, first of all, you're running out of stem cells. So you're running out of the engine to repair damage because being alive means getting damaged. Uh, just breathing, you know, creates, you know, these free radicals and that can damage your cells and DNA. So just sheer fact of being alive, you're constantly getting damaged. As long as you have enough cells to replace what's damaged, then you're good. So that's one fundamental thing um, about aging is that you're running out of stem cells because they, they, they get damaged too. Um, but, you know, Along with that, you know, you are constantly getting damaged, right? You can injure yourself, but you can also just by breathing and toxins and or just breathing. Um, you know, you're running out of um, healthy cells that can give you the right amount of hormones, can, you know, detox your body, the, you know, correctly. And basically, that's just, uh, you know, you're, 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 you're functioning, you know, you're declining mitochondria, you're losing mitochondria, you, you know, everything is, is getting older. Um, so yeah, I would say this is why I'm so passionate about stem cells because I know all the other things are very powerful. They're all really important, but I look at stem cells as the engine to the body, like, you know, like, like the engine for the car. So if you don't have engine, um, you, you're really, you're not going to get anywhere. Um, so, but the engine also needs fuel and that's everything else we're doing, you know, good diet, exercise, fasting, you know, you know, all the supplements, are the right fuel for the body, but it, eventually they, if they can feed the engine, if they can keep the engine healthy, um, then you, whatever damage you make, you're going to be replenished. Um, so you've got to have the engine. That's like the mental. So I, I think one day stem cell therapy is just going to be so basic 
such a basic part of medicine that you know you you know you take some stem cells to prevent you from declining, um, keep you from getting sick. But you, if you do get sick, because we invariably you know we, we can catch something, then or we injure ourselves, get some stem cells. It's gonna make you heal so much faster, so much more completely. And um, you know, then I have people who are doing surgeries before surgery. They have to do surgeries. They get surgeries, but before. For surgery or right after they would get a stem cell treatment and they heal three times as fast. So one day, you know, just like people were given antibiotics for surgery, right? That you prevent something bad from happening. And in the future, we're going to give stem cells, you know, to speed up healing process and to prevent even prevent infection. I mean, the, the stem cells have a lot of functions, you know, antimicrobial is one of them. So, so it, it's just going to be part of the, the foundation. But, but, you know, coming back to the aging, um, I, I think, you know, we, we've got, if we can replenish, you know, replace the engine, you know, or, or upgrade your engine, then you can, you can kind of um, really slow down this train of aging. Well said. And I could see how much you love talking about it. You just light up and get so excited speaking about the topic. It's, uh, <laughs> you know, it's like stem cells are where acupuncture was 20 to 30 years ago, where it was kind of like, yes. what is that to now acupuncture is all over the place. So that's what you're saying. Hopefully stem cells will get there even sooner yeah. than what happened. Well, the, the beauty, stem cells has one advantage uh, for people to accept stem cells. And, and that's what I find fascinating is that um, for stem cells, the, the, the allopathic doctors, they, it's much easier to accept it, right? Because it came from Western medicine. It, there's a very, very scientific, you know, this, this, uh, uh, you know, kind of origin to it. So they know, and there's rigorous studies. So, so they know that this is not some Eastern, you know, some, you know, they don't consider it, you know, foo foo. Uh, so, so they think that this is solid. Um, so it's it's easier for them to adopt. And then for integrated doctors, they love it. This like you're bringing out the natural healing intelligence of the body you're infusing something that's so holistic and have so many ways of helping the body so for them that's that's yes that fits into our philosophy so it's actually easily acceptable by both worlds but the inertia in 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 any person and especially something as patriarchal as as medicine um and then with as much existing um vested interest uh, in current establishment. So all these are serving as obstacles to, to the, you know, acceptance, but it's, it's coming. I mean, I, I just, I laugh, you know, seeing all these restrictions and all the fights that's going on. I was like, well, I just wait. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. Well, you're doing a good part getting the message out and the research and serving uh, your community. What are, um, what are three, must have supplements to help support cellular function that, that you take and you recommend? Oh gosh, there's so many supplements out there. Um, but definitely, you know, vitamin D, I think everyone knows that it's so essential and uh, so many people have, um, a, you know, a lacking of it and, yeah. um, omega three is really important. And I, I think there are various new forms of omega three coming, coming on, you know, personally, I really do not like the fish oil. I just, I really don't like taking it. Um, I just, I don't like the taste and, and it just, and it worries me because, you know, if you have this fish burp, <laughs> then you probably, you know, it's probably oxidized and it, it makes me worry. Am I hurting myself or am I benefiting myself? But, you know, it's true. Omega-3 is really important. Um, so I was, you know, I still put that up there, but you have to find the right form. And, um, and personally, I really like fulvic acid. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it's, it's a strange name and they call it acid, but yeah. it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a huge, you know, this a combination of, of um, um, uh, minerals and, um, and and kind of antioxidants, right? Every everything in one, and that came from natural, you know, uh, degrading organic matters. And that's going to go back to the earth. So I I really like it because it's so comprehensive, and I I put that in, in you know in my kitties' food, you know my my yeah. cat. 
I, I thought, you know, I don't know how they produce these cat food. I'm buying the best possible, but I don't know if what, you know, what they put in the food to have enough nutrients because nowadays, modern day, there's just not enough nutrients in our food. So, so I, I think fulvic acid is probably underutilized and I hope more people use it because there's some incredible, incredible results. Yeah, that's awesome. No, I, I love that you shared that. I, I use fulvic acid as well. And I put it in my dog's water. <laughs> oh, I put it in, yeah, I put it in my, the, you know, the problem with putting it in my dog's water is that he drinks it and then he spills it all over my tile. And then there's these black spots all over. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, because he just, he, oh, he likes to slobber, right? <laughs> uh, uh, he's a big boy that's why and then i put it in i put it in my coffee but then it makes my teeth black and i gotta wa i gotta wash brush my teeth right away but yeah i think it's great great for oxygenation <laughs> of the body vitamin d is, is so important like you mentioned i live in miami and i look at lab work of so many people and they're still deficient in vitamin d because is that right yeah well insulin and vitamin d have like this inverted relationship so if you don't do the work to keep insulin down you could keep taking all the vitamin D, but it won't get to the point where you want it to get. Fish mm -hmm. oil, Doc, I've done a lot of research on fish oil and I've interviewed a lot of uh, brilliant minds on fish oil. And I've come to the conclusion, at least for now, that I, I stay away from it. You know, to your point, most of it yeah. is already rant rancid. So I just say eat the fish or even take these parent essential oils that are giving you kind of like the derivatives for your body to make its own. EPA and DHA. So um, I like I love the suggestion. I think more important than getting the omega threes up is eliminating the bad omega sixes. What do you think about that? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, but that's tricky. That's that's tricky. It is tricky because like, they're everywhere. I love nuts, but I know <laughs> most nuts have very high omega six. But I, I can't. Yeah, but staying away. <laughs> what what I mean, but that's fine. Like eating foods that, that have those omega sixes are fine. But I'm talking about like the canola, cottonseed oils, the adulterated omega sixes. Oh. What I mean, like get rid of those. Is what I mean. Oh, yeah, boy. toxins. Yeah, read your labels because I. Yeah. Yeah, the, the labels that that's the final straw. They can make the package look really healthy and really enticing. You think you're getting something really good for yourself. Yeah. <laughs> and then you realize. I just bought some poison. <laughs> exactly. Especially in the keto space. You see like keto friendly, non-GMO, but you, like to your point, you got to read the ingredients because they are so good at marketing. Don't let them fool you. Um, I know. You have a book on Amazon, um, which is titled The Tiger of Beijing, The Inspirational Memoir of a Fierce Regenerative Medicine Physician. So share a little bit about why you wrote the book. <laughs> what is it about? Yeah. Um, so I, I know actually some of my patients read it. They're like, Dr. Kong, you know, I thought you were going to talk about how you became, you know, where you are now. Um, I said, yeah, that's going to be in the second book. You know, I am a fierce regenerative medicine physician, but this book is about a very distinct story, very, very dramatic transitional time in my life. It's about three years of my life of how this, from this, you know, who really, yes, my dad was a professor, but we had no money, we had no connections. We're just, you know, I'm just one of the, you know, uh, 1.3 billion Chinese. And I had a dream to come to the United States, but, but I had every card stacked against me. I just, there was no, I didn't know how. So from that, um, to, to actually make it happen, you know, with the first chapter being me standing in front of American embassy and getting my visa rejected. So this is after 18 months of relentless hard work and breaking rules, you know, sneaking into libraries you know, to get what I needed. And I, 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 I got rejected. So what do you do? I mean, that, that's a huge, that, that was one of the biggest obstacles in my life and seemingly impossible here. This country that's very strictly controlled and there's just bureaucracy you know to the Inyang. and then I was facing a powerful country that's making it very difficult to to enter um, they have lots of restrictions and I think at the time it was one in ten students who are applying who actually were able to to get a visa um, so that that's um, I was, you know, I, I had to, um, um, when I realized I was rejected, then I had to figure out a way. So it's, a, it's about determination and um, uh, a little bit of, um, you know, this tiger, or you can call it bullheadedness, you know, just, just going for it 
however it's going to happen. So, you know, what I did was unconventional. Uh, it was actually fueled by anger, by anger that somebody has so much say over how I can live my life. And, and I just, I just, I rebelled. I said, no, you know, you're not going to prevent me. And, and so it was a very interesting journey, how I made it to the U S and then I spent my first two years in San Francisco, um, overcoming the next big hurdle, um, a very, very difficult situation personally. Um, so that, and how to escape that and how to come out and intact in a way, um, there was some, there was definitely damages done, but, but still coming out triumphant, you know, it's like a soldier going to a battle. Yes. You got some wounds, you got some, you know, injuries, but Hey, you won the battle. So that's kind of where I was at. And, uh, what I was going to talk about in my next book is that this wounded soldier, you know, who just won a battle, is going to go for, you know, the, 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 bigger battle in life, which is achieve true happiness, how to achieve it, achieve full healing physically, psychologically, and spiritually. So that, that's, that's a long, that's, that's a long journey. Um, but this first book is, is a, it's a story. I, actually, initially when I first wrote it, I wrote it in a not form. I didn't really want to make it a memoir um, because I wanted to just because I wanted to write a story because it was a great story. Um, and then I was like, you know, you know, screw this. <laughs> this is my story. This is me. This is who I am. You know, that's it. I just it's, it's, it's my story. So that's how it. Uh, yeah, how it came about. Very cool. It's a remarkable story. So that, that's super awesome. I'm glad you wrote it. And it's going to be a great book for like your future kids and grandkids to read and learn about your story. <laughs> super cool. You've seen living in China for 20 years, you've seen the restriction that was happening over there and then coming to America, the land of the free. I'm, I'm somebody who was, I was born here in America. Uh, my parents actually immigrated here in the 70s, 1970s from Iran, which is another country where there's a lot of restrictions. So I am so blessed and I and I am so grateful that I was born in this amazing country to be able to do what I love to do and, and have the freedom to choose to do that. So on that note, what are some of the things that you're grateful for to, to be in America, seeing how it was in China and being here? Like, do you feel like this is the greatest country in the world? Like, what is your love for America right now? Uh, I definitely, I'm very grateful for America. I, I, um, I do feel like I belong here. So personally, our personal uh, style, chemistry, you know, how we, you know, just how, how we are as a person. I know personally, it flows better here. My personality fits better. I'm a very open, very straightforward person and very warm. Um, you know, I'm able to express my emotions. I can give hugs freely. It just feels really good. So I felt kind of constricted in China. Um, but I think each country is almost like a person, you know, you have your distinct personality, you have your strengths and your weaknesses. Um, I love America's strengths. And actually, I think there's a big, huge love affair between China and America. You know, I, I, you know, despite whatever that's going on politically, I know the Chinese people, Chinese people love Americans. I, I remember since I was a kid, you know, we were like w watching World War II movies and, and the American soldiers always giving the, 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 the V sign, right? The Chinese kids they just love it. They're so cool. Look at their chewing gums. <laughs> they just love the Americans. They just think they're, you know, just cool people. And uh, I know Americans, you know, they love, Chinese culture and love to Chinese people. I've heard a lot of people who've been to China. They just, they, they love the Chinese. So, um, I, I, but, you know, everyone has their own strengths and weaknesses. I think China's weakness was that they're too conformist. Um, it's very judgmental culture, highly competitive. So in, when you're so competitive and, competitive and so judgmental, then you're not nurturing this individuality uh, of each person. You're not appreciating a person's unique strengths. You want them to be a certain way because you all want to compete for certain positions and get to certain spots in life. Um, so there's more judgment. So, so I, you know, I'm more appreciated uh, for who I am uniquely here. 
Um, and I love that. I, 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 I'm very, very grateful. And the opportunities allows that, that there's these mechanisms in place. I, I came here, I was, I was penniless. I absolutely no money. And then I was, um, I was in San Francisco state. Um, I, I thought, you know, okay, instead of buying, borrowing loans, which itself is fantastic. The government can lend loans to students so they can actually get education and you can go, you can apply to any university you want and they might accept you, you know, like that's not part that that wasn't really not part of the system in China. It's a whole other system. So, so here you, you can choose, you can choose what you want to study, what university you want to go to and what class you want to take. So when I, um, um, you know, tried, you know, I was thinking, you know, what, what can I do to, to, to not have so much debt? You know, so I looked into scholarships. Um, granted, that particular scholarship was for minorities. Uh, and I, would, I didn't exactly because it was a little bit of that uh, affirmative action, you know, flavor because it's for minor, uh, underprivileged minorities. So that's um, Hispanics, uh, African-Americans, uh, Native Americans and uh, Pacific Islanders. So I didn't fit into any of those. Um, but I was grateful that um, this one professor who's in charge of this scholarship, you know, kind of um, all these programs to nurture students. And he granted to me, I, I applied because they said, you know, we, we can't discriminate. So we can't tell you not to apply, even though you didn't fit into the category. I said, I am a minority. I, I think I'm pretty underprivileged because I have no, I have nobody in this country. So I applied and he gave it to me um, because he believed in me. And, and then he actually got in trouble at NIH where the, the the money was given and he stood up for me he wow. someone said why did you give it to her you know she's not you know part of this you know this particular category she's you know chinese and so he actually i heard from another doctor who told me another um, a professor that he slammed a table he stood up he said you know what this is the best student we have and you know uh, that she deserves this and i have the constitution behind me so go ahead <laughs> wow, that's awesome. So, I know. So how amazing. You know, I felt I felt that there are people who really, really care. And um, um, yeah, so very, very lucky. Yeah, very grateful. Yeah, beautiful. Well, well said. That's an awesome share. Um, is that what you shared in chapter two of your book? Is that what you're referring to? No. Or, oh, okay. Something else that happened. Per yeah, personal. I'm not okay. sure I even share the story. In oh, the wow. Book. Well, I'm glad we got it on the podcast. So thank you for I sharing know. that. Question. <laughs> <laughs> for, for um, so we, we're going to put your website down below. What about where else can we find you? I know you have a YouTube channel, so share that, share your well, social yeah, media. Please handles. watch my YouTube channels because I put um, a lot of these, um, you know, uh, uh, kind of, uh, you know, five to 15 minute segments explaining different aspects of stem cell therapy. That's rarely talked about um, that. I actually, most of them, I don't see anybody that has covered it. Like, like is, is stem cell therapy in Panama better? Uh, like what are the three stages healing in stem cell therapy? What about, you know, putting other people's DNA in my body? You know, what, 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 what's your thoughts about that? And what's the difference between stem cells and exosomes? You know, what should I go, go for? Um, so there, there are a lot of different, you know, kind of niche questions that people die, are dying to know, but no one really have given them a good answer. So my channel is just Joy Kong MD. So just look up YouTube and just put my name in there. You will see all my videos and, and, and uh, you will really enjoy it. It's, 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 it's not massive number of videos, but all important, you know, answering important questions. Yeah, we'll put a, we'll put a link for it down below. I was watching some videos earlier today on your channel. It's awesome. You also have a great you have a, an Instagram. Uh, is it the Tiger at the chi Tiger of Beijing? Is that what yeah? It is? That's my personal Instagram. Personal. Because, you know, I have you know, I, I just you know, for for me, you know, I have one that's um, uh, stem cell doctor Joy. Oh, in mm -hmm. one word, that's kind of the professional one. But I'm so much more than stem cells. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. I, you know, I've got stem cells. I got psychiatry and, you know, ketamine therapy and, you know, the whole the whole spirituality aspect. And then my memoir, my, you know, writing. And it's one day I'm going to publish my poetry and I oh, um, cool. you yeah. know, photo shoot. You know, I want to publish a book with, a, you know, kind of artistic photographs with poetry. Yeah. So that's kind of just me. In me. <laughs> it's tiger underscore off underscore Beijing. 
We'll put that down below. I saw in one of your posts that you, uh, one of my colleagues who's actually been here, I've interviewed her here. I'm a good friend with her. Dr. Kate Seuss was at your clinic. And, oh, uh, yeah, you're doing right. yes, absolutely. Yeah, she's out there in LA. So that was cool to see that. Yeah, um, that's fantastic. Yeah, she's she's great. Yeah, she's we, great. Uh, your name, Dr. Joy, is perfect because you are the doctor that spreads the joy, spreads the <laughs> wisdom, spreads the knowledge. Thank you, uh, Dr. Joy, for coming on the show and for your information. When I'm out. I, I founded a, a stem cell company called Chara Biologics, and Chara is a Greek word for joy. Oh. And the tagline for the company is actually let the joy of healing begin. Because I Perfect. think people don't realize that that there's intrinsic joy in the healing process. So so yeah, so that's that's my 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 wish for everybody. Let the joy of healing begin. I love that line. Let the joy of healing begin. Amen to that. Um, when I'm out in California, I'm going to stop by your clinic. If you're ever Thanks here in Miami, you. you let me know. Thank you so much for coming on the show. I had a great time with you. You're very welcome.